Hello and welcome to The Glam Talk with Nagashri Ramamurthy. Anybody in the fashion industry, the films or even the television have a constant companion with them. Today, even the general public have taken to it, without which none of us look the way we look on camera. It is none other than the makeup. For the makeup, we have an entire team working in the background to just make us look good. It is none other than the makeup artists. These artists have been trained for years and have touched up lots of faces before they come and do it for the people on screen. So my guest today is a special makeup artist who belongs to the Naturals family. She is none other than Sunila Johnson. Hi Sunila. Hi Nagashree. How are you doing? Very good. How are you? Very good, thank you. That was an amazing introduction. I really thank loved it. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure to have you on my show. It's the same here. So, first time when we met, we of course met in the backstage. Yeah. yeah. I still remember the day. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, I was like having three people with me and uh, you know, I had to like in between uh, get in, you know, do a touch up for you and stuff like that. But you were like really patient, you know, and so I wanted to do a little extra for you because you were like supporting me so much. And so, yeah, I still remember it very well. I think it's been more than an year now. Yeah. Like uh, almost a year. Almost Exactly year. one yeah. year. Last True. year, same month we met. Yeah. And <laughs> for the Femina event. So yeah. she has been my makeup artist for the Femina Stylista South event. So thank you so much for making it once again. And when you guys work on the backstage, right, I'm sure if it is for a show, you'll have 20, 25 people. The number of models are there on the show. True, yeah. So how do you deal with that pressure of having to work on so many phases, different skin, lots of differences? Um. See, there's a whole lot of thing that goes in when it when it's a show, right? Mm -hmm. So we uh, we don't get to do a patch test on everyone. Correct. So we uh, usually go with uh, whatever uh, we we think at that minute. You know, like we think, okay, this foundation is going to really work. work well with them and stuff like that. Because you can't you you don't have time for error there. Correct. Because you you're like uh, working on a uh, a pressure time. And then you need to finish that phase uh, in that particular time and then move on to someone else. Correct. So we just go on a uh, lot of our uh, tried and tested methods with a, without a patch test and then we uh, build on it as we go. And yeah, different phase, phase structure, skin type and a lot of color correctors and stuff like that we need to use. And uh, also again, uh, they, they you know, when it's a show, you have a theme. Correct. Okay, so you can't really, uh, there's no much of room for creativity when it's a show, like, mm -hmm. like Femina or right. right. So you need to stick to the, the guidelines that yeah. are given yeah. to you. Yeah. So if it's a wing, the angle at which they want to do it, if, if it's a longer wing, shorter wing, or if it's a eye shadow, two tone, three tone, if it's, you know, whatever, they have a theme that is prescribed right. to you mm -hmm. and you need to just follow that. But uh, it's fun, you know, so when, when it's actually the thing, when you're actually doing the makeup and stuff like that, it's crazy, you know, because um, in about one hour's time, you would finish like around six to seven faces. Correct. So it's like maddening. But when you see the final result up on the stage, it's completely satisfying. I know. Yeah. Just to let you all know, anytime there's a show, uh, we have like a specific set of models, number of models actually. It's not just one or two, but it's definitely above 15 or 20. Yeah. Any show that we'll have, yeah. will have so many number of people who are also, you know, working on their own themes, on their different, different costumes that they'll be wearing. So the makeup artists have to coordinate with your outfit, with the kind of skin type that you have and the kind of look that goes with you. So I'm sure, you know, as makeup artists, you guys have to put in and understand a lot of things before you go and uh, yes, take yeah. the face. Yeah, yeah true, yeah. true. So apart from the shows, any makeup artist has her start. So let's see how she started. So Sunila, coming back to your initial days, mm -hmm. like why did you even take to makeup and how has it been then? Okay, very few people know about this. I'm a software professional. Okay, <laughs> okay. that's a shock so, to me as well. <laughs> so um, I started off with the corporate life, I mean, okay. started off with Infosys and stuff like that. And then it went on. I was with the corporate world for about... Uh, 13 plus years mm -hmm. and then I decided okay it's time for me to start something for my own you know like work for my own lives and uh, makeup is something that I was extremely passionate about mm. uh, but what made me switch to uh, you know taking makeup as a career is uh, my own wedding 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now that is a backstory that even <laughs> I absolutely have no clue about, and yeah. it's also pretty funny that people start off from the wedding. Yeah. So, so yes. my own wedding. So um, I um, there was this uh, very famous uh, makeup artist who had come from Bombay. Okay. Highly recommended. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I didn't even go for a trial and stuff like that. I completely trusted him, and I thought that he's going to give me the best look. Best. Yeah. Okay. So it was my engagement. Okay. okay. And. Uh, he gave me a look which made me look really round. Uh, I looked like a disco ball, you know, like, okay. <laughs> like I was shining, glittering everywhere. Okay, <laughs> and I couldn't recognize. And by the time I f the makeup was done, and I had a couple of calls already, I was late for the venue. Okay, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I couldn't recognize myself. I was like, who is this? And oh. then I thought, okay, anyways, let me let me go. So I went and. None of them liked my makeup. Okay. And it was so bad. And uh, on the day of my wedding, mm -hmm. I decided to do my own makeup. Right. Okay. Right. I didn't want to depend on anyone. I understand the way my face is. I right. wanted to do my own makeup. So luckily, you had this trial in your engagement <laughs> exactly. with a different makeup artist. She had a trial yeah. in the engagement, which didn't go well. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay. So and so um, then I realized, you know, that uh, there will be a lot of other other brides who uh, actually would go through the same thing hmm. and uh, because I am passionate about this then I thought okay let me do this as a career hmm. and then help other brides you know hmm. other hmm. brides should not go through the the let's say the pain that I went through you know hmm. because hmm. It, even today I don't like to see my engagement pictures because I, I look you horrible. You just don't look yeah, that so way that you want to You yeah. know when, when it's a wedding it's a lifetime affair. Definitely. You know, it's not just you go and it's not like a, a party makeup. You just get something done and you forget about it. It Correct. stays with you throughout. Correct. So, you know, I want to ma make that a very special moment for the brides. Okay. And that's the reason why I thought, okay, let me just get into it because, it. you know, I, I'm anyways passionate about it. Yeah. Okay. So, that was the story or the reason why she took to makeup. I mean, everybody has a story. You know, as yeah. to why they come into the creative industry as such. So I'm glad that your wedding has been your, uh, you know, a milestone for you <laughs> to get into makeup yeah. today. Yeah, too. So uh, post wedding, like you would, uh, you know, you took to makeup then, but I'm sure you were also working then. Um, no, I had uh, taken a break from my uh, work, okay. so I okay. had completely dedicated myself into the. Uh, let's say the uh, glamour industry <laughs> right <laughs> okay. right true. makeup is part of the glamour industry yes. so so i had uh, completely uh, dedicated myself there i took a break from my work mm -hmm. and i completely dedicated myself to makeup i, mm. I wanted to dive deep in and uh, so i went to uk okay. birmingham and i joined a, a makeup school called the uh, the beauty school of birmingham mm -hmm. and i also went to london to do my hair hair okay styling course not the hair uh, dressing so okay. hair styling course okay. in London and uh, makeup in Birmingham mm. and I, w I spent like a good two months there okay. I got my VTCT certificate mm. and then I decided to come back to India mm. and the main reason why I wanted to go to UK to get my makeup done is like I, I checked with a couple of uh, makeup schools in Bangalore, Bangalore. itself mm. but then the quality and the coverage that the you know the uh, UK schools were giving was far better than what was available in Bangalore okay. at that time. Okay. And so I decided to take up there. And okay. then I came back and then, uh, yeah, there's no then turning back after yes. that. <laughs> yes. I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. And how, how long has it been, like, this whole, uh, you know, time where you've gone to UK, started off the course, and how, how long was it? Uh, like about, the course lasted for two months. Okay. And then I came back and then uh, it's been like, I don't know, forever, I guess. <laughs> I can't even go back to I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Because once you get into the industry and then you've been working constantly, you just don't know, you know, what's happening with you. Like, you have done so much. Yeah. And just to date back, you have so many other events in between where you actually lose track of time. True, yeah. Right? So that, I'm, I, I agree with you. So, yeah. nothing <laughs> against it. So now, after you've come back, uh, if you have to look at, you know, getting a makeup done for a bride, because her story also began from her wedding, who was that first bride you actually did your, you know, you actually were the makeup artist for? Okay, so, uh, my first bride was, um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I, I can name her. Uh, 
Well, you don't have to name her. Okay. But if you just remember some, you know, uh, snippets of how it had been, or who was it, or something. Okay. Um, my first bride uh, when I came back was the tough one. Okay. okay. So, she had a lot of, um, you know, marks on her face. Okay. Way too much. You know, okay. she had a lot of marks on her face and a mm -hmm. lot of discoloration, and mm. uh, and then she had very very thick lips. Oh. So it was a tough bride to start off. Start with, off, with. but she had beautiful eyes. Okay. Okay. I I completely focused on her eyes, mm. and then uh, her face was completely concealed to hide away all her, uh, you know, the marks and discoloration and Got pigmentation, whatever it. was there in her mm. face. Mm. And then I had to contour her lips to make it look sm smaller. Okay. Yeah. So that was a, um, a tough job, but then. From there on, I got a lot of referrals from her because she was looking amazing on the stage. Okay. So, I, yeah. So, that was my first bride and the tough one. <laughs> I'm sure. Like, first, the start, you know, is very important. And if you have actually cracked that first deal, I'm sure the upcoming uh, referrals or the upcoming brides will definitely be easier, you know, even as a makeup artist. So, after that, when did you actually enter the fashion industry as such, you know, to actually work on face of models? backstage or even just like for a you know, portfolio. So, how has that been? So, uh, I entered into the fashion, uh, you know, the industry with makeup and stuff like that. It's uh, with uh, Tripti An Arvind. Hmm. Tripti Arvind. She hmm. was the uh, Femina Mrs. Uh, India 2017, I guess. Okay. Okay. So, if I'm, if I'm remembering it. And she was uh, the Femin Femina Mrs. India 2017 world as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay and so uh, it it all started with her okay, okay? she is a very good friend of mine we mm -hmm. in fact started our career together together and uh, then she came to me and she said okay she's she's being uh, part of this uh, uh, you know the the uh, pageant and then she wanted me to help her with makeup mm -hmm. and then uh, the fashion makeup was completely new to me. Okay. I've learned that as part of my course, but I've okay. never uh, done a hands-on with hands someone. Hands-on, okay. Huh. So, uh, when she came in and when she requested me to uh, be part of her makeup team, and I gladly accepted, you know, because it's, it was a, a new avenue for me to venture True. into. And then uh, I went there and I was like, okay, so we did a couple of photo shoots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm which she used for her uh, media coverage and stuff okay? Got it. and, and ah. I, I was like very thrilled you know when I saw my work going up on uh, newspapers and media and stuff mm. like that mm. and then she went to Chennai and unfortunately I couldn't join her for that mm. for her campaign mm. there mm. Uh, because I had uh, other commitments lined mm. up mm. but then uh, I wished her good luck and then from there on, I got confidence that I could actually do fashion makeup and it's it was very, very interesting. And then, yeah, I met you also. <laughs> yeah. That is true. That is true. Yeah. yeah. So, she has been your start she for the, entering the fashion industry. Yes, exactly. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So, apart from that, uh, I feel any, any show that happens, uh, no matter where it's happening, you also have this, you know, the timeline, the very, very tight timeline that you'll have to finish the makeup in. Right. So, how do you deal with that pressure of, you know, the timing? Because you will have to finish all the models mm. before they hit the ramp, before the show starts. True, yeah. And you have to stick to your, the good makeup that you give it for everybody. Yeah. How do you work with that? So, uh, we have, uh, you know, the uh, a meeting kind of thing that is held before the uh, makeup, actual makeup starts. So, we decide on what kind of looks that we, we will uh, give to the models mm. on the ramp. Mm. And... Uh, and and we we decide whether it's going to be smoky or it's going to be just a, a two tone kind of an eyeshadow and stuff. Like that. So we keep everything ready on the on the on the table on hmm. the makeup table. We don't really go into our um, our kit unless and until it's really it necessary. necessary. Yeah. Okay. Say say for instance, we usually we don't really do too much of heavy contouring for uh, the, the models because Correct. they already have a chiseled face. Correct. Okay. So we wouldn't do too much of a uh, contouring, but then if there is a need, okay, and if there's a model who's requesting for like you know, uh, just highlighting, her, yeah, 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 highlighting her cheekbones or highlighting her, uh, you know, bridge of the nose or something like that, then we just do that do little extra. So we have everything ready, and mm. then uh, like I said, so when we have this, uh, you know, meeting, we decide on the kind of look that we are doing, 
and uh, so yeah so it's it's more like a you know like a template kind of thing that we work on okay so when we do that it's faster right okay right. and uh, yeah, uh, so uh, when when I was uh, doing makeup for uh, the Femina Stylist uh, uh, contestants, I was the uh, the lead for Correct. the makeup Correct. team. Okay? True. So uh, my responsibility was also to check each and every model before she gets out of okay. the makeup room. Correct. Okay, so uh, so that was an additional task. So I had to really look whether the wing is correct, whether it's balanced, whether the uh, the blusher is balanced, or True. if or it's like because when you're doing it in a hurry, okay, they, they could There's be a slight always, shift. Yes, yes. Right. So um, I'll have to really check, and if there is uh, any correction that needs to be done, uh, either I do, it, do it or I just Send tell the back. the girls to just correct it again. Right. So, uh, and whoever is working on it, they are like, you know, luckily I've had very good uh, team. team with me. So, I didn't have too much of a touch up to do. Got it. That, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So, uh, I was also want to come to that because uh, any time you're working, right, there's definitely a lot of pressure on you because you yourself are doing the makeup and uh, at the events, yes, there is one, you know, head person who is going to head the whole makeup team and then yeah. let the others just do the job. True. And now it's time to question her more about how the industry has been treating her or how is uh, her relationship with the clients when she's working with brides? How does she deal with their ideas of how their look has to be on the D-Day? So, Sunila, how has it been when you work with a bride and she has something in her mind of how she looks? Mm. Uh, because I'm sure they might, you know, in words they might not be technically correct. Exactly. Or they might be correct as well. How do you sure. convey your image of how she looks and how do you balance her image of how she looks? Uh, see, like uh, we all know that uh, internet is like loaded with information right now. Mm. Okay, so when when it's a bride, she's already checking internet and Google and stuff like that. The whole lot of images that are there in her, um, you know, in her phone. Mm. So when she comes for a bridal discussion and stuff like that, she she is like, you know, she says, I, I want to look that this way. Mm. You know, I want my hair to look this way. Correct. But then we fail to understand that the pictures that she has is of a blonde hair huh. okay so a particular kind of a curl looks right. good if it's a if it's like a highlighted hair right okay right so it's it's not just about uh, you know taking the order up hmm. so i also take that uh, extra effort to educate hmm. brides hmm. okay so hmm. i just hmm. tell my brides okay this is how it is like for instance just uh, two days ago, mm. I, I'm like, I was having a bridal discussion with uh, with my upcoming bride. Mm. Okay, mm. Mm. so she had this uh, image that she showed. So she the the flower started from here, okay. and it went until the uh, floor. the floor. <laughs> okay, so it was like a huge thing, mm. Mm. and she said, "Can can you do it?" Mm. I said, "Yeah, I can do it." Mm. So I, and she was like, "Okay, can you um, do it with extensions?" Mm. I said, "Yeah, perfect. I can do it." Correct. Okay. Huh. I said, but what is the occasion? Where, which occasion are you planning to wear this? Huh, that look. Okay. Huh. So it's like a straight strands of uh, you know the flower, Flowers, the jasmine yeah. flower. Yes. So it's starting yes, from here yes. and going up until the right, floor. Right. Right. And she said uh, it is for a. Uh, um, for the wedding mm. and uh, we should also know that the bride is a Christian bride. Okay. So which okay. means that she has to walk the aisle. Correct. Okay. And with this, I then tried to explain it to her. I said, see, I can do it. There's mm. no issues. But then the thing is, the, sure? look yeah. will, the look will not be, uh, you know, perfect if the flowers tangle because it's strands of jasmine, right? So True. the possibility True. of it getting tangled is like high and you always should have someone beside you who will help help you take the flowers out when you're sitting right, and then help right. you get up and stuff like that and the weight correct okay are you willing to take it up and because the wedding is going to last like for about an hour easily yes, right yes so for one hour you're going to take the entire weight, weight on your hair true true and, and said see my job is to get the look done mm. you show me a picture i'll do it mm. Okay, but then are you going to carry it off? Right, right. So when I educated her, that's when she realized, okay, these are the things that she didn't really account for. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then she said, okay, I'll look at something else. else. Got okay. it. Okay. So it's not just, uh, you know, they come, they show a picture and I get it done. Okay. Sure. I also tell them, okay, this is something that will not look good or will look good or we can enhance something or we'll have to like kind of mellow it down. Correct, correct. So I tell her, tell the brides that way, 
and touch wood till da- till date like um, i have never had any trouble with my brides you know so mm-hmm. they and, and and something that i have to really mention you know so this very uh, i think most of the makeup artists you know uh, if they have done you know true, true. so uh, they they would uh, have brides uh, coming up to them and saying you know i want a very nude look or natural look ha huh. Okay, but then when when you do a natural look, they don't want it's a heavy makeup. It's not that want uh, what they want. Yeah, it's yeah. not a heavy makeup, you know. So they say I don't want heavy makeup. Huh. I want like very light makeup. Hmm. And then I ask them, okay, is it a party makeup that you're looking at? So they no, no. We want like a little heavy, which means okay, you are now you're uh, getting an idea exactly what what, what they actually looking true, at. True, true. So they want a full coverage, okay. And what they actually have in their mind is to have nude colors. Got it. Okay, got nothing it. bright. I'm sure. Okay, I'm sure. So yeah. it's like mostly they actually are not clear of what they want, and once the look is done, that's when they actually understand. Oh, this is not what I wanted. I was thinking exactly. of something else. Yeah. So with this, I also I would like to ask you. Apart from being, you know, the head makeup artist uh, in the fashion shows, you're also a makeup educator. Exactly. Right. You have your own makeup studio. So what yeah. is it called, and uh, how has it been going? <laughs> Okay, the uh, makeup studio. Uh, it's um, you know, it's it's called Amili Amili mm-hmm. um, um, Makeup Studio, and it's uh, my daughter's name. Mm. Okay, okay, and uh, it's been doing pretty good, and I've uh, done couple of uh, courses as well. Okay, and uh, I've I've trained close to around I don't know how many. <laughs> Quite a long yeah, list, I'm assuming. I she doesn't know how many. What do yeah, you think? So, so <laughs> like I have done a like. close to around 7 to 8 batches okay and each batch has an average of about 20 students to students okay so yeah doing good doing good so uh, you know once you get into the industry and you know your craft really well and you've had your hands on experience the next thing would be becoming an educator herself now when you actually teach people makeup okay what are just like in two lines because we have our audience also watching so mm. what would you think that anybody Uh, be it a makeup uh, aspirant mm. or general public or a teen girl or a senior lady so what should she know about makeup just for herself like what are the those like tips that she should know before she goes for it um see the uh, the basic thing that uh, anyone should really identify mm-hmm. is uh, you know just just by seeing you mm. know you'll have to really uh, kind of zero down or identify their face shape Okay. eye shape skin type okay okay so any makeup hmm. okay is based, based on, on that these okay and can we repeat it once again yeah so these are face shape face shape right eye shape eye shape and the skin type and the skin type so okay. face shape eye shape and skin type yes on which any kind of makeup that you decide later will go by okay yeah. right right and uh, now going a, a step further than that so you you'll have to figure out whether it's going to be a day event or evening event ha huh. okay it's very important got okay? it got it so you can't have a very uh, matte kind of a look for a evening event because Agreed. it's going to look Agreed. very flat on your face right so you need to have a little bit more highlighter Correct. and also you need to know how much of light is going to fall on your face <laughs> okay hmm. so if it's going to be like a party kind of thing where it's going to be dim lighting and stuff like you can carry off a little bit more shimmer on your face got it got it okay and and if it's going to be a, a stage hmm. or if she's going to be up on the stage so you need to really work on the the highlighter that goes got on. it got so it. it's not just okay it's like you have a palette okay you just open Correct. that and just what you yeah. have yeah, yeah yeah so you need to really understand how the event is going to be what kind of lighting is going to be is it going to be a formal setting is it going to be a casual thing where the bride is moving around the crowd got and it. stuff like got that it. so you need to really understand that and also you need to if it's a day event whether it's going to be an outdoor event or, or it's indoor. going to be indoor Okay, okay so just the like the changes. basics of you know where you are located exactly. and you know what time of the day it is and how what is your positioning in the entire event. Yeah. All right. There are certain times you know like these these details might not be available. It mm-hmm. could be as simple as even for a show. Sometimes I mean for show I'm sure there is a lot of preparation that goes in. Yes. But if there is a guest who is attending a fashion show and she is one of the guests for the event, mm-hmm. then what should she you know sort of think about or he should think about, like what kind of looks. is preferable for them or what kind of makeup will go with that um I mean, again it depends on the outfit that you wear mm-hmm. okay so if if you're not uh, uh, up on the stage walking the ramp and if you're just sitting uh, Correct, in the, in the, in the audience al- yeah. among the guests so it depends completely on what you're wearing, what you're wearing. okay so right. 
and because it's a fashion show, you can go a little bold. Correct. Okay, so that's where your creativity comes, comes. in. So you can go with amazing bold eyes with the nude Agreed. lips. Agreed. And yeah, I mean that's in the that's in trend right now. You know, Fo yes. the entire focus is on eyes, and then Correct. and then go nude on the lips. True. Yeah, so you can do that, and or or you can just go bold eyes, bold lips. You know, both works. Yeah. You know, you it's, just come it's as an entire. Show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. So uh, apart from this, like when we talk about shows, yes, there is a fashion show happening. There are times where we work in the studio setup where you have to shoot the pictures, right? So at that time, what would be your take, or how would you work in a portfolio setup? Picture is a little bit more. Uh, you know, a, a different ball game altogether. Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, it's high defi definition cameras that are Correct. used. Very true. And, so and they are pretty picky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, even your small uh, mistake is like you know magnified it ten times or Correct. probably hundred times. Correct. You know, if it's like Correct. Depending on the kind of media it is, and so you need to really uh, work on um, flawlessness. Okay, so take a little bit more time, but then make sure that you're base is completely flawless mm -hmm. because even a small uh, blemish that is there on your face is highlight. Got it. Okay. And even the eyeliner, it needs to be perfectly drawn. There's no like, uh, you know, rough edges and stuff like that. The eyeshadow should be blended well and stuff like that. So, you need to really, really put that extra Like attention. just get to that exactly. minutest yes. details. Yeah. Right. Correct. It could be as simple as, you know, something is not done right, something yeah. is not. You have to also work on it on the ground, exactly. right? Like if they haven't yeah. got their grooming done, just in case. I'm sure exactly. a lot of us do know that when you have a shoot, you have to, you know, go well groomed there before you even hit the venue. True. But there are times when you have to do that also, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of touch up that goes in. Goes so, yeah. yeah. So, after each shoot, they, they come back to the makeup room. Right. And then we see whether anything is moved, you know, if the makeup is like got it. Gone, uh, kind of faded or something like that. And then you give you a touch, it up. touch it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's there. So, when it comes to portfolios, yes, there's a lot of detailing that goes in. Now, uh, how how often do portfolios you know work for you, or how often are you in a portfolio setup shoot setup? Uh, I would say most of my uh, makeup goes into portfolio. If it is not a paid for portfolio, I'm, I I do a lot a of collaborations. Uh, collaborations. So True. I I do a lot of uh, marketing collaborations wherein. Uh, for my own, uh, you know, building my own catalog, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. I have models coming, I have, um, you know, a lot of this uh, other uh, uh, brands who, who kind of uh, engage with me Got and it. we do a lot of uh, photos, you know, so I'm probably sure. monthly, on a monthly, monthly basis, basis, yeah, there is something. Now, why I actually brought up the portfolio is because with the pandemic in, I'm yeah. sure a lot, there has been no shows that actually we could, you know, yes. go and work so hard for the show, meetings before the show, on the D-Day, call times are crazy and I'm sure, uh, so every show that we do has a call time, yeah. right? Now the models have a call time and makeup artists also have a call time that is like what, four hours, five hours before the show? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So how do you deal with that, you know, your the call time you're there and how do you go about your uh, schedule on the D-Day? So, uh, see, when, when you when you are having all these important events happening, so you plan well in advance, you know. Right. So it's it's never a, a case where uh, they call they, you get a call in call. the morning and they say, okay, you need to be ready in about Correct. half an hour's time. And stuff like that. So uh, the way I prepare myself is like you know, like I mentioned already that there is a meeting that hmm. you attend and then there's this kind of uh, specifications that are given to you. True. So, I do a lot of reading. So, even though, uh, you know, I, I have X amount of years of experience and stuff like that, it's just that I do a lot of lead reading, I do a lot of Google uh, search and stuff like that, I do a lot of YouTube videos mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I kind of prepare myself mentally a day before, before the event. Right, okay? And right. even when I go there, I make sure even before I leave my uh, house, I make sure that I have everything in place. The brushes are cleaned. Because that's something that I really focus on. Okay, Got so it. I I have uh, I always have a clean and uh, kind of shampooed brushes. So I make sure that everything is clean. My palette is like completely uh, disinfected. Because hmm. not just for pandemic. I mean, I always follow this because it's it's something it's hygiene. that is yeah, it's something that is like closer to your skin. You know, True. like uh, it just imagine if I'm if I'm using a. a you know, disinfected brush on your eyes, you know, you're, you're going to land up with something and then that's going to reflect on my work. 
correct so i would rather uh, you know disinfect everything so that is kept uh, dis disinfected and my sponges are like completely new i make sure that all my supplies are there my eyelashes like that is something that i really really focus on mm. i i always use natural hair of uh, eyelashes mm. so i i keep my supplies ready and i make sure that my glues and everything that are is there place. that's all in place and it's all fresh you okay. know i i also kind of refresh my makeup kit mm -hmm. okay i i don't know how many of the viewers know that but then a makeup has a lifespan of 2 years okay, okay. any Should product it, yeah, any means. product yeah. so even if it's lipstick or anything like that so it has just a lifespan of 2 years and after that you need to discard this yeah. yeah okay so we have had ladies you know like most of us you know even before i got into makeup i have done it you know i have kept my uh, age old <laughs> and stuff like that for many many years you yeah. know <laughs> so yeah i discard all those and i make sure that i have uh, fresh su supplies, supplies in my kit huh. and um, besides that uh, there's one more thing that many make um, you know probably you and i would have done mm -hmm, it, you know mm -hmm. we take the mascara and we pump it correct okay so Which mascara is? is never to be pumped okay okay suppose we swirl then they're removed okay okay when you pump what happens is techniques uh, yeah i mean the, these the are the techniques <laughs> that all of you should know so yeah, yeah mascara so how do we use it this is how we use it so we we have to swirl it and we have to remove right. it the minute you pump it you're pushing in air correct, correct. okay two Got things it. happens your mascara is going to dry out faster so you will have and to buy and use the one. brush yeah. Yeah. yeah and second thing is you're going to whatever is there in the air you Got know it. so that's going Got going it. into your bottle Got okay it. that's Got something it. that Uh, anyone you know should All right. practice as a natural i mean got, got it so these are some makeup essentials that you should follow apart from you know look keeping an eye for the kind of products that you should be using you should also know how to use the products that you have actually <laughs> brought in yeah. so with this uh, one final thing that i'm going to ask you sunila is naturals gave you an award last year yes. on women's day Yeah, for Women's Day. Yeah. So, how has that experience been? Actually, she is one of the awarded makeup artists from Bangalore, from Natural Salon and Spa. So, how has that experience been? That was a very, um, you know, I would say very special moment. I mean, I still, I, I mean, I, I think that would forever remain my special moment. I'm know? sure. I would really want to go back and re relive that, that yeah. you know, experience. Uh, I was, in fact, surprised. Okay, and uh, they. What I was informed is that there's going to be a mention okay. that uh, of of my uh, contribution towards hmm. makeup. Huh. But then uh, when I was called o over the stage and then given the award and stuff like that, I was like really excited and then uh, thrilled. I I don't think I can ever ex express that in words. words you know, yeah. so it's it's beyond words. So I was also a part of that <laughs> event, so I do know how yeah. it feels. So I'm sure we have heard so much about makeup. What happens in the backstage every time there's a fashion show or even a shoot? Also, anybody who wants to get their makeup done, they do know what are the essentials they need or how to even take care of their makeup own makeup kit. So I'm going to thank Sunila for being a part of my show. Thank you so much, Sunila, for thank taking so time much. out and being a part of my show. Yeah. Any closing uh, words before we actually wrap? Anything else you have to say? um makeup is just not uh, you know something that you put on your face it actually gives you confidence that extra boost that everyone needs so i would i would just say you know go crazy on makeup you know don't hold back yeah so makeup is all about expressing yourself and also seeing what you can do with your own creativity i'm going to say this is the wrap of the glam talk with me nagashri ramamurthy i'll see you all next time